Hi everyone, welcome back to our Pico Developer YouTube channel. In this video, we'll introduce Pico SensePack for Unreal Engine, so you can take mixed reality development to the next level. And we'll focus on the video see-through feature that allows you to blend real-world scenes with virtual objects. By the end of this video, you'll have a solid understanding of how to enable the video see-through mode on Pico headsets so users can see the physical environment all around them while wearing the headset, or through specific meshes to create a portal effect. We'll begin by showing you how to enable see-through capabilities in the Unreal project settings, and then focus on background see-through to show the entire physical room. After that, we will demonstrate the window see-through feature that allows showing the camera feed through specific meshes. Finally, we will share how you can make sure the see-through effect keeps running after the app resumes following a pause. Make sure that your headset is updated to Pico OS version 5.7.0 or a newer one, and that you're using Pico Unreal Integration SDK version 2.3.0 or newer. We'll focus on Unreal Engine 4.27, although the same steps can be used on Unreal Engine 5. Finally, we recommend using a Pico 4 headset as it allows showing RGB camera feed data instead of monochrome black and white. In the previous Unreal Engine videos, we used Pico SDK version 2.1.5, but in this video, we'll upgrade to version 2.3.0. It's really easy to update your Unreal project to the new SDK. Just uninstall all the Pico plugins from your project's plugins folder and then copy and paste the plugins from SDK version 2.3.0 that you can download from our website. After that, recompile your project from Visual Studio. Make sure you use a C++ Unreal project instead of a Blueprints one. So first of all, to be able to use the see-through feature, you need to enable it in the Unreal Editor project settings. Open the project settings and under Pico XR settings, find the Mixed Reality section. Make sure Enable VST is checked. VST here stands for Video See-Through. Let's create a new empty level to avoid having too many virtual objects rendered initially. Go to File, New Level, and then select the default level. Drag and drop the VR Pawn from our previous videos to the scene, and make sure it's enabled by default. Then remove the Floor Static Mesh Actor, as we're not going to need this for this video. Make sure you save the new map. In this case, we named that as MR underscore map. Also, don't forget to go to the project settings and set this new map as the game default map and as the editor startup map. In our previous videos, we showed you how to render Pico controllers or virtual hands. For this demo, we only want the app to render the virtual controllers. So make sure in VR Pawn, that show controllers variable is set to true. You can choose to enable background see-through or window see-through when designing a level. Background see-through enables the physical environment to become a scene's background image upon which the virtual objects are overlaid. Let's see how to enable background see-through. In the World Outliner panel at the top right of the Unreal Editor, select the Sky Sphere actor of our level and then click Edit Blueprint and Create Child Blueprint class. We'll create a custom Sky Sphere actor and replace the default one of the scene. We'll name it BP underscore MR underscore Sky Sphere. Edit the blueprint of that newly created actor and open the construction script. Make sure you override the dynamic material instance used to use the underlay material, which can be found in the Pico XR plugin and specifically under Pico XR slash materials folder. This material is a translucent and unlit material with zero opacity, so completely transparent. During the composition process, the texture of the see-through background will be rendered to the eye buffer through the Pico Composition Service and Unreal Engine. The see-through background image will cover pixels with an alpha channel value of zero in the eye buffer. Alternatively, you can completely remove the sky sphere blueprint from your scene, as this would give you the same effect. Open your level blueprint and on event begin play, connect the Pico API function PXR set see-through background and make sure you tick the boolean value parameter. This function will set the headset camera image as background and will make sure the video feed is rendered in the scene on top of all pixels with alpha channel value. We will now add some functionality to be able to spawn virtual cubes on select locations around us using the controllers to combine virtual objects drawn over the physical environment. Open the VR Pawn blueprint and under each motion controller component, add a cylinder static mesh component. Change its transform to make it look like a ray. This way we create a nice ray starting from the controller and extending towards our scene. Make sure collision preset is set to no collision 
to avoid any collisions with other virtual objects. Now let's create a new blueprint actor which will represent the virtual cubes we want to render. Go to the MR folder we created earlier and create a new actor blueprint. Name the new blueprint as pp underscore MR underscore cube. Add a cube component and rescale it to 0.2,0.2,0.2 to make it smaller. Make sure that the component has simulate physics disabled and collision preset set to no collision. Now let's create a material for this cube. Go back to the MR folder and right click to create a material. Let's name it M underscore MR underscore cube. Press and hold 4 on your keyboard and click on the empty space to create a new linear color and connect it to the base color of the material. Right click on this new color and click convert to parameter. Let's rename it to color. We're going to manipulate this parameter to change dynamically the color of the material. Now we go back to the MR folder and right click on the newly created material to create a new material instance. Let's name this mi underscore mr underscore cube. Also, in the blueprint, open the construction script and let's make a dynamic material instance for this cube so we can dynamically change its color parameter we created. Go ahead and create a new function called setColor, which will receive a linear color as a parameter and apply it to the color parameter of the dynamic material instance. Finally, create a new variable, let's say color, which is going to be an F linear color, and make sure its settings are exposed on spawn and editable. On event begin play, make sure we call the setColor function, passing the color parameter of the blueprint. Now let's go back to the VR Pawn Blueprint. We're going to add the preview cube attached to each controller to help visualize where exactly the cube will be spawned. For each motion controller component, we're going to add a child actor and make sure its X translation is set to 55 cm. Select as child actor class the Blueprint MR cube we created earlier. Connect the button A and button X events to spawn an actor of type Blueprint MR cube. The color parameter will be exposed. Make sure button X spawns a red cube and button A spawns a blue cube. We'll use the preview child actor pose to define the pose of the newly spawned cubes. So connect the get world location and get world rotation as a location and rotation of the newly spawned actors. Now, let's build and deploy the app on the Pico 4 headset. You'll notice that I can see my room through the headset camera feed. I can also see the virtual controllers rendered on top of the physical ones, and I can see a ray extending for each controller, with a black cube preview at the end of it. When I press the A button, a blue cube will be spawned, and when I press X, a red cube button is spawned. Now, let's see the second way of how we can do pass-through using window see-through. That's useful in case of flat surfaces to get a view of the real world. We'll create a virtual rectangular window that will be attached to our controller and will allow us to see the real world through it. Make sure the VR template map is now again the default map in project settings. Drag and drop the VR pawn to the scene and make the default pawn. Make sure the level blueprint enables see-through as we did before by calling the relevant Pico API. Open the VR pawn and for the left motion controller, add a cube and scale it properly to create a virtual window mesh. You can optionally add a render text component with the word real world to also make it look better. Then add a plane and assign it the underlay material we used before so that the camera feed is shown through that plane. Create a new variable, for example, b allow cube spawning, 
and make the other parts of the application, such as the virtual ray, the virtual cubes, and everything else, not spawn at all. Let's build and deploy the app. Make sure the VR template level is now the default level in the project settings. Notice that I can see the VR template virtual level mainly, but the real world window mess is showing me the feed from the camera, creating a virtual lens looking into the real world. Likewise, you can define meshes in your scene, like portals, to view the real world through them. The last thing I'm going to show you is how to avoid see-through failing after resuming an application that was paused. That is happening because pausing a VR app will automatically disable see-through. For example, if you press the power button to make the headset go to sleep and press it again to resume the session, you will notice the pass-through feed is totally black. It's really easy to fix this though, as the only thing you need to do is explicitly enable see-through background whenever a system resume event is detected from the event manager. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more exciting tutorials. And follow us on Twitter to get the latest updates about the Pico SDK. Thanks for watching.